Are there animals that are like real life Pokemon? Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, the place where I, a wild animal biologist and Pokemon trainer, often combine my two passions into one. Today, we're gonna be looking into what animal is like drowsy and seeing what moves this animal may have if it actually were a Pokemon. So you ready? Join the Safari and let's get started. Drowsy, the hypnosis Pokemon, a psychic type that was first introduced to us back in the Kanto region in Pokemon Red and Blue. Drowsy can put people to sleep and they like to eat their dreams. However, they're quite picky when it comes to what type of dreams that they will eat. As you may imagine, the fun dreams and more lighthearted ones taste better compared to bad dreams, which apparently would make Drowsy feel unwell. And Drowsy tend to eat people's dreams, well, through their nose. Ooh. <laughs> In particular, Ash's Pokedex has a very interesting entry. It states, Drowsy, said to be a descendant of the dream-eating tapir. It was the first Pokemon to use a combination attack like Hypnosis and Dream Eater. The other Pokedex entries also give light onto what real life influences from our world could have guided the Pokemon creators. Take for example, this entry that said that Drowsy is said to have descended from the legendary beast Baku. So the Pokedex entries really have given us insight into a few different influences from our world that shaped the Pokemon Drowsy, one of which was the Baku. And I wanted to do some deeper diving on what exactly is a Baku. So I asked my friend Ken Kusumoto, who happens to be over in Japan right now. Ken helped answer some of my questions regarding the Baku. Whereas some sources have said that the Baku originally was depicted as a kind Mera, a mixture of different beasts. In Japan, the Baku has been depicted as a tapir since the Edo period, and even was depicted in pulp culture in the 1984 film Beautiful Dreamer. Some of my sources suggested that you could call out to a Baku to aid you if you were having a nightmare. You'd have to call out to it three times for it to appear and it would eat your bad dream, thus allowing you to sleep peacefully through the night. However, there was a word of warning about calling out to the Baku, because if he ate your dream and was still hungry, there was the risk that he would then continue to feast on your hopes and dreams. Whoa. Ken confirmed that nowadays, there's not much discussion around the Baku, for it kind of faded out in the 1980s. However, he was quick to mention that Bakus are found on the sides of shrines and temples. To see some of these temples and shrines for yourself, I encourage you to head on over to Ken's channel, which I'll pop a link to in the description down below. So now that we got the Baku covered, it's time for us to discuss more the tapir. A really interesting looking animal that truly does look like a real life Pokemon. But what are they? They almost too look like a chimera of sorts, like the Baku was once represented by, as they don't really look of this world. Turns out that the tapir's closest living relatives are actually rhinos and horses. But tapirs are actually considered more of a living fossil, for they're in a league of their own. The origins of tapiridae can be traced back at least 50 million years. And they have changed reasonably little in their body plan in the last 35 million years. But where are modern day tapirs found? Well, there are four different species of tapir. Three are found in Central and South America. They are the lowland tapir, the Baird's tapir, and the mountain tapir. The other species of tapir is found in Southeast Asia. Meet the Malayan tapir. Now, what makes a tapir like a real life Pokemon? Well, hot take here. I know Drowsy's a psychic type, but I would argue that the tapirs of our world are probably more of the water type variety. And as such, would have a move like Water Pulse. And this is because they are actually fast swimmers. And in fact, that pretty snazzy schnoz that we see both Drowsy and Tapirs have is prehensile. And when they're swimming, it acts like a snazzy snorkel. Yet even though they would have a water typing, don't be fooled, they're also rather quick on land. In fact, I would say that the Tapirs of our world would probably know the move Quick Attack. 
and that's because they can run very fast for short burst. In fact, looking at their legs, I thought it'd be cool to point out that they have four toes on their front legs and three on their back. And it's pretty cool that they can run fast too, given where they live. Whether they're the Malayan tapir or the New World tapirs, the ones in Central and South America. Because when they're on land, there's typically a bunch of trees around them. So for the fact that they can weave through those trees, pretty cool, hence quick attack. Now, given its appearance and location, we're gonna focus on for the final two moves, the Malayan tapir. We can see that based on its appearance of half and half coloration may have lended itself quite nicely to drowsy. The Malayan tapir is the largest of the four species of tapir, weighing up to 720 pounds and getting up to about six feet in length. The Malayan tapir is quite the heavyweight. Now, Malayan tapirs are found from southern Thailand and southern Burma, or Myanmar, through the Malayan Peninsula, as well as on the Indonesian island of Sumatra. Sadly, though, their numbers are decreasing, and they are classified by the IUCN Red List as endangered. Now, the ability that I think our real-life Pokemon, the tapirs, would have would be thick skin. Now I know this is usually for Drudigan and Sharpedo, but hear me out. Malayan tapirs have very tough and thick skin, particularly on their hindquarters, which comes in handy if you live on the island of Sumatra and you have to deal with Sumatran tigers hunting you. Now as far as the final two moves, I would say of course I have to pick one that Drowsy would have to pay homage to Drowsy, and that would be rest. Malayan tapirs tend to be more active during the night, which could in fact have guided the legend of the Bapu being active at night and thus eating on people's dreams. But during the day, they typically prefer to rest and sleep things through. Although they have been seen to be feeding during the day as well. The fourth and final move that I think the Malayan tapir-like Pokemon of our world would have would be Odor Sleuth. Now, while the Malayan tapir certainly has impressive size and stature, is great at swimming, great at running, they don't have great eyesight. So they rely heavily on their sense of smell and sense of hearing, hence odor sleuth. In all seriousness though, the tapir is one amazing animal. Whether it's the Malayan tapir or the lowland tapir, they are all pretty cool and unique animals. In fact, I love celebrating World Tapir Day and sharing information about these incredible animals. In fact, every day should be World Tapir Day. But it is for the Tapir Specialist Group, which by the way, I'll pop a link to their website down in the description below for you to check out more and learn ways that you can help this incredible real life Pokemon. In fact, if you like tapirs, why not give this video a thumbs up? To keep your safari going, why not check out my favorite Pokemon animal comparison video, What Animal is Like Gumi? Go on, click it, I'll see you over there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in that video.